in the morning on my way to Copper Break State Park in uh, Western North Texas. It's about an hour and a half's worth of driving. So I'll see you there. There we go. Here's a little preview of what we're in for today. It's quiet out here. I just started Juniper Ridge Loop. It's about a half mile uh, loop just south of the visitor center. Nice little lake down there. Man, that's nice. Park ranger doing his rounds. Little spots of prickly pear. These have really long spines. I don't know if they're a different species than uh, the regular stuff I'm used to. Hate to fall on that. Everywhere you look, there's junipers and rocks and a bunch of birds out here too. You can hear them off in the distance. This area used to be lake bed and you can see the prehistoric lake shore the uh, the wave patterns on the rocks. This is a better example of it. Right now I'm on Rocky Ledges Loop and uh, kind of hard to tell where the trail is. If you look every once in a while you'll see some signs. If you don't see any of those signs <laughs> you're lost. Get back on the trail. But here we have one with some arrows on it. And they're actually point to point by sight. So they come in handy. Because I mean really, does that look like a trail to you? I find it amazing that uh, you see one hill, like this one behind me, made, a lot of, made out of limestone. And then you get this one I'm standing on, made out of uh, red sandstone. Just spent the last full 15 minutes or so backtracking. Had to refine the trail. You get up in the hills and there's really no way to drill a hole to put a post in. So a lot of them are just uh, supported by piles of rocks. There's the mighty Pease River. <clears throat> Dry as a bone. All right, so I'm off the hills for now. The uh, Rocky Ledges Loop is done. But I'm on the uh, the big loop right now, big uh, big country loop, something or other. Now that I'm off the hills, I see more uh, mesquite, oak, hackberry, grapevine. And you got this uh, salt cedar. You're starting to see more and more of this down in the lower areas. Copper Break State Park is home to cattle, not only just regular cattle, the Texas Longhorns herd. Every weekend at 2 o'clock on Saturdays, park ranger uh, calls them up and has a little meet and greet. So hopefully when I'm done with this little trail here, I'll be up there just in time. One of the things I've been wanting to do for a long time is pick some uh, prickly pear apples and eat them. You can eat them raw. Uh, you got to get them at the right time of year, though. Mmm. The seeds are pretty hard. But if you had a, a gallon Ziploc bag, you could collect a bunch of them and make some jam out of them. Put them in a food mill. You work the seeds out. 
but it's very delicious. It's very, it's got a sweet taste to it. It's not overly berry sweet, but uh, it's very good. Thin out a little bit to where you got to keep an eye on where you're going because you'll lose the trail. You get more than ten feet away from this trail, you may not see it again. Huh, I found it. If you haven't gone geocaching or you have kids that want to go geocaching, take them. It's a blast. This is way out there for a geocache. But it's worth it. I'm still on Bull Canyon Trail. I'm in the very southwest part of the uh, park here. This park is sitting on top of four different USGS quads. So pasting together a map was kind of a pain in the butt. So I just grabbed the park office map. That's good enough to get me where I'm going. This place is gorgeous. I can't even describe what I'm seeing right now. It's just a big chasm right in front of me. This is uh, pretty much straight down. This is why I go hiking. Views like this. There's a swallow's hive right over there. Let me see if I can zoom in. I'm about 150 yards away. There they are, right there. Pull up. Uh, bunch of slabs of sandstone came tumbling down. They got all washed out from underneath. This whole area is red sandstone, then you got quartz. You got a little bit of agate out here. Not a lot. But that's the whole bull valley right there. I almost stepped on this guy. Carry on. It's amazing how those little guys blend in. I almost squashed him. Another live form that I've surprised on the trail is this little box turtle. Say hi. Come on, you're on YouTube. Do something. Oh, all right. I just got done eating a couple of prickly pear apples and I'm just walking along and all of a sudden I realize that there's no trail. I see a few footprints from uh, somebody that's been through here maybe a month ago because they're all blown over with sand and not much evidence of trail. I mean it's all hard pack. Look at it. Every bit of it. I don't think I'm really following a trail per se. I know I'm going north ish. Oh, there's another sign. Man, everywhere you go, there's just beautiful stuff everywhere. I mean, look at that. Why are you sitting home on the couch? On top of this plateau. Not sure what altitude we're at, but. Last thing I'd expect to see. Is a lake. Wanna go fishing? And of course cattail. Man, there's frogs everywhere up here. You know what I'd like to do is camp right here and listen to the bullfrogs at night. 
there's been a couple of catfish in here tearing up the water. You can see how uh, muddy it is. Raccoons have been here at night. I bet you there's a couple bass in there too. One of the things I did last night when I packed, put a couple of these water bottles in the freezer. And as the day goes by, I drink it up. It's nice and cool. So in addition to those two, I have two more liters of water inside the pack. Starting to get a little warm out. I'm in what I would call a mesquite prairie. A little bit of wild mustard, mesquite. Too late in the season for mesquite seeds. Maybe pretty good right about now. A lot of prickly pear apples. I've been getting about five or six at a time and munching on them. You get a sour one every once in a while. <laughs> Some of them are a little overripe. But uh, the deer have been eating them. You see scat all over the trail. It's an example of the scat I was telling you about. The deer eat those uh, apples. Prickly pear apples. They love them. This little body of water is called Big Pond. About a mile and a half, two miles north of the main campground. It'll work for now. Well, I found another geocache. It was a ammo can tied to a tree, <laughs> padlocked to a tree. Whatever works. I got some uh, some beans and some ramen noodles with some veggies, and there's a chunk or two or three of jalapeno mm, mm, mm. excuse my slurping I just like to say I'm glad I quit smoking four years ago talk a little bit more about them as you go through some of them uh, we've had these guys for a number of years they're more like pets for us but they do weigh you know 12 to 1500 pounds about a six foot horn spread although I've never stood there with the tape measure from tip to tip um, we'll introduce you to him this is grandpa here grandpa's like me he's an old man we're the old, old guys here why are his and bones like like us out? when well I was going to answer why are his bones sticking out well because when you get older some parts get bigger, some parts get smaller, you get gray around the muzzle, you don't walk as good as you used to, Aww. and these guys live in these conditions where we spoil them like this, probably about, you know, 25 years is a good lifespan. He's up there in his high point, in, in the early 20s, 21, wow. 22, something like that. And there's no way you can fatten them up? Well, he's, he's doing just fine. It just, really? they, they, they naturally run thin, too. I mean, these guys are spoiled. These were prairie critters. Uh, you know, hiked up back end, um, 
and they were they were designed to live in the wild. Wow. We do not have overhead shelter for them in the winter. We open up the, the winter pasture, they get down in the breaks, they get out of the north wind, that's it. We don't do vet work. They don't get sick like reg, uh, normal cattle. Really? What happens in my experience anyway has been that Within a few days, maybe a week of their passing, they'll actually get way down in the heel and start look and start, you know, hurting and stuff like that. Now, old Tex here, he's he's got arthritis like me. He limps. Aww. But if you look on his left rear hip, he's got the shape of the state of Texas. You'll have to turn it around for us here in a bit. Um, Blanco Besos is back there. As blonde kisses, that he'll kiss you. We'll see if he can do that in just a minute. This is a little bit. He has a real similar sounding name, but we can't use it in polite company. Look at him. He's being mean. See, now, just like me, you know, if I go headbutt the rest of the rangers, they get out of the way. So. <laughs> that spot over there. Texas orange to be. Uh, in fact, uh, Texas is really happy because, you know, the Longhorns did beat up on OU. Yeah, they did. So, uh, yeah. We've been having a little cake party and celebrating. Uh, but yeah, right there on the back leg in the white, there is a state of Texas. This guy is such a proud Texas Longhorn, he wears that Letterman jacket 24-7. You want to see that again? You want to see that down here? See him taking out his mouth one. Now do it with the small ones, shall we? Longhorn's lover. Longhorn's lover. That's a very special kind of lover. Seven years old. Okay, let me tell you that. Respect this year. Yeah, he's a thrill. Uh, he's about no big. He's the biggest animal in the herd. But.